All right. I've got seven o'clock. So welcome everybody to another PF and QF chapter happy hour. I'm Will Clayton, uh, regional representative here in Minnesota. And once again, I will be your host and moderator. Joining me this evening, Bob St. Pierre and Jared Wickland. Uh, Bob is Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever's Chief Marketing and Communication Officer. And Jared is PF and QF Public Relations Manager. Bob, Jared, how are we doing? Great. Doing great. Good, good, Thanks good. for having us. Of course. Um, so I'm really excited about tonight's topic uh, because it, it comes up in conversations with my chapter leaders here in Eastern Minnesota all the time. Um, everybody wants more individuals at their events, be it their banquets, if it's a habitat event, uh, pint nights, whatever it is, uh, we want to um, share our message with more folks. Um, we want to capture a more robust audience, but the world is changing. Um, it's not as easy as it used to be. You know, maybe some of the marketing tactics that chapters have used um, in the past just aren't quite clicking. And so I know you guys are going to touch on social media a little bit, um, talk about ways to generate more exposure for your uh, events, for chapter leaders' events, and hopefully attracting a new audience. I, I'm not saying we all need to go out and join TikTok. Uh, but I do think there are some tips and tricks that you guys will share with our chapter leaders joining us tonight that'll be really beneficial. So again, thanks for joining. Um, before I go, I got a couple of housekeeping items. Um, for those of you that have joined us before, this is very similar for those of you that are new. Um, this is a chapter happy hour. So it's just that. It's laid back. It's a relaxed atmosphere. I certainly don't anticipate going the full hour. Uh, in the first one, we only went about a half an hour. The last one, Colby and I went for about 45 minutes, but I won't keep you more than an hour. So um, feel free, if you're going to ask a question, use the Q&A function on the bottom instead of the chat. That way I just have to moderate um, one thing. And uh, there should be an upvote function working. So if there's a bunch of questions that come in and you guys are reading through it, hit the upvote function and uh, it'll pop up to my screen, but uh, we'll get to the questions, I believe, towards the end. So with that, Bob, Jared, I believe you've got a, a bit of a presentation, so um, take it away. You're on mute. Yep. Classic. Two years of this stuff and that <laughs> we still haven't got it. <laughs> Sorry. I, I keep going in and out with my internet a little bit. So, um, Bob, if I freeze up for some reason, you've got the presentation. Just keep going and I'll, I'll join back in. Sound good? Yep. Great. I'm going to share my screen. Um, welcome to, to all of our chapter leaders. Um, love, to, uh, love to see everybody at uh, our happy hour here tonight. And uh, we're going to go over a little bit of the, the public relations side of what we do at Pheasants Forever uh, and quail forever. Pull up my screen here. How's that looking, Bob? Good? Not yet. Just your face. Still my face. There we go. How's that? Rock and roll. All right. So here we go. We'll keep this short and sweet. Um, we'll answer some questions at the end and uh, Will can kick in where he needs to and uh, Bob and I will take it away. So Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever, uh, Public Relations, It's For The Birds. Um, a little bit about us. My name is Jared Wicklin. I was a PR intern originally with Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever starting in 2009. Um, from that position, I was there a year. I went down uh, to Iowa and I was a regional rep for 52 chapters, uh, mostly in Southern Iowa, kind of sp split the state a couple different ways uh, over the six years that I was there, uh, but really enjoyed my time in Iowa. And then eventually came back to be a public relations specialist and, and now public relations manager at our office, get closer to family, had some kids, 
um, that type of thing. Uh, barstool biologist. Uh, I learned plenty from my coworkers about the birds and the bees. Um, I went to Luther College in Northeast Iowa and basically traded farm ch chores for hunting access. Um, I read a lot of books. Uh, I do a lot of research on my own online and I learn a lot from our staff uh, about uh, managing, uh, particularly for pheasants. Um, my wife, Carrie, uh, she's an ER nurse up here, been dealing with COVID here uh, since it began. And uh, I'm, a, I'm a girl dad. I've got uh, two wonderful girls at home who are up watching uh, Frozen 2 right now. So if you hear some musical instruments in the background, it's, it's, it's probably <laughs> that. 12-year uh, anniversary with Pheasants Forever and Quill Forever is coming up with, in May. And uh, I just, I love working for the birdhouse. Um, big upland hunter, uh, rough grouse hunter, grew up in Duluth, Minnesota. Um, those are my girls there. We do a lot of fishing and other things. Uh, and also do a lot of habitat management on the side. I've got 10 acres. We border a 550-acre wildlife management here in the uh, area here in the Twin Cities. And uh, love doing management. I've written grants for them to help get rid of trees and, and help uh, keep a robust pheasant population. I'll turn it over to Bob. All right. Uh, I am what is called a youper. Um, so yes, uh, Will is successfully laughing at the meme on the left-hand side. Um, I'll, I'll touch on the photo in a moment, but uh, I, I am a youper. I grew up in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Uh, ended up in Minnesota for college and got a job in minor league baseball, working for the St. Paul Saints. Uh, worked, started as an intern and worked my way up to the assistant general manager in charge of advertising, marketing, and communications for the Saints. And after seven years in professional baseball, I had um, two job offers. One to be the director of marketing for Pheasants Forever and one to be the director of marketing for the Detroit Tigers. And uh, that was a pretty tough decision for me. I grew up uh, wanting to be Alan Trammell's um, uh, heir apparent at shortstop for the Tigers. But ultimately, uh, 18 and a half years ago, I made a choice that I've um, really, really been gratified with in choosing to work with Pheasants Forever for um, coming up, well, coming up on two decades. Um, I'm incredibly proud of the organization. Um, that we all share um, as, as volunteers and as employees. Um, incredibly blessed to work for this organization, receive a paycheck for something that um, is integral to who I am as a person and something I care so deeply about. And um, I can't thank uh, personally all, all the volunteers out there um, doing everything on behalf of um, habitat and in our hunting heritage. Um, it's just, it's an incredible organization to be a part of. And um, I was also really proud that uh, to be a part in uh, the organization in 2005 that, um, that launched Quail Forever, kind of the entire process of um, discussing a merger with another organization to launch in our own identity in the quail world and how far that's grown in um, the last 16 years is something that I, I'm incredibly proud to have been a part of. And um, just a credit to all of our chapters out there on the quail side too, that have um, really put the quail forever brand on the map and is unbelievable amount of habitat work here um, in the last 16 years too. Uh, this is more than a job for, for me and, and Will and Jared. This is our, a lifestyle for us. Um, I bleed this organization as much as all of you do. Um, my dogs go to work with me. Um, I, I talk about pheasants forever in all of my free time, including Saturday mornings, uh, 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. I do a radio show in the Twin Cities about hunting and fishing. I do it for free. I do not get paid. I do it because I love the outdoors and I love talking about what we do as an organization and um, it's a, another outlet. And um, I've turned that into kind of a, a stepping stone into our organization's podcast uh, where we talk about what's happening um, on the conservation landscape and particularly with Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever, and hopefully uh, give that a listen if you haven't already. And 
So my life motto is, um, well, twofold. Fun is good. And that comes from the St. Paul Saints. Um, you got to have, you got to have fun in life and, and work and, and uh, know that is not my abdomen there in um, the photo, but uh, it is a um, illustration of a person with type one diabetes. I've got an insulin pump and right now connected to me and connected to me all the time and except when I take a shower which is probably too much information, but <laughs> um, I'm always uh, reminded of life is short. I very likely know what's going to kill me. And that's a great reminder to uh, savor every moment. And, and that's why I love working for this organization. And the photo there is, is uh, the photo in the center is day one, uh, January 6, 2003. So as you can see, uh, you know, 18 and a half years later, the organization has been somewhat hard on me. <laughs> but, um, I had a great time and uh, um, I've been with the organization a number of years. So as Will mentioned, we're going to talk <clears throat> uh, about um, public relations, media relations with a particular, particular focus on getting news coverage for your chapter events, chapter banquets. Um, yes, to get more people into your banquets, but um, it kind of the <laughs> to use the baseball analogy, the first getting the first base is getting news coverage. So I'm going to let um, uh, Jared be the pitcher, and uh, I'll uh, I'll call the signs and uh, uh, as the catcher here, and I'll throw it back to Jared, and he can he can run the show. Awesome, thanks, Bob. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about story angles just to, just to begin here. Um, Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever is unique in that we, we cover a lot of different story angles or have the opportunity to. Um, and one of the things I, I want to throw out there to, to our chapter base is uh, don't, don't ever be afraid to send a story to your regional reps or straight to myself or Bob. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of cool things happening in this organization, and I'm going to uh, hopefully demonstrate some of those on, on, on some of the forthcoming slides, but there's a lot of great things happening within Pheasants Forever and Quill Forever where, um, you know, some of them might not be that we're focusing exactly on pheasants or quail, but, but the, the byproduct is the birds that we love. Um, so hopefully you'll, you'll see that as it's demonstrated here uh, throughout the discussion. So, um, so here we go, human interest. Um, here's a couple different, three of the main story angles uh, chapters can focus on when you guys are thinking about projects that you're working on in your communities, banquets, uh, learn to hunt events, uh, just cool opportunities uh, to put yourselves out there uh, with a newsy angle to it. So human interest, discussing people or pets in an emotional light, uh, achievements or problems that bring interest, sympathy, uh, or, or motivation to the reader. Um, the second one, and I'll, I'll talk about all of these on, uh, as these slides pull up. Um, second one would be a current event, so important events happening in the community. Um, you know, I think Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever chapter leaders know better than anyone that, especially in small, smaller rule settings, that they, they kind of rule the roost per se when it comes to, when it comes to a, a, a family or community event. Uh, Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever chapters really take the cake when it comes to throwing the, the big event for, of the year in their communities. Uh, and that's, that's important. And that's a lot of times, and especially in some of the smaller newspapers uh, of these rural communities, um, that's, a, that's a big thing for them. So don't be afraid uh, to invite reporters to some of those. Uh, so current events, important events happening in the community. Uh, like I just said, we take on that role for the outdoors community bar none, uh, in my opinion. And impactful news, stories that highlight uh, positive impacts on the local community. So youth hunts, land acquisitions, we've been doing a ton of those lately, especially with uh, our call, call the Uplands uh, national campaign. Um, walk and access support, I'll talk about that a little bit. A banquet wrap up, uh, there was a chapter in Nebraska that was brand new that uh, the paper came in and did a wrap up of their banquet and all the different things that they're putting money towards. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of ways to generate news um, and this is, this is just a couple that I, that I pulled down off, off of uh, some of our recent searches. So uh, Nobles County, Minnesota is a good one, keeping water clean with cooperation. So a lot of the land acquisitions that have gone on in Nobles County, Minnesota uh, are, sur are surrounding um, 
are surrounding their water reservoirs or watersheds. Um, and not only are they making great places for public access for people like you and me uh, to, to go out and hunt and appreciate, uh, but it's protecting the water supply uh, of, these, of this main community around Worthington, Minnesota. Um, and the protecting the water supply in a lot of these stories is kind of the main theme, but you get those themes of, of access uh, and permanent land protection in there as well. Um, so that's just, that's one good example. Uh, local habitat access. So upper, upper right corner picture there. Uh, Mike Stevenson, a lot of people used to know. Um, he's not working for us anymore, uh, but he's still very involved with Pheasants Forever uh, and Quail Forever. And uh, this, was, this was a story that came out of Mitchell where the local chapter, it's a community-based habitat access program. So uh, Pheasants Forever and some of our local volunteers came up with the idea of throwing money towards public, public access. So new acres of CRP, paying, paying landowners a stipend to enroll new acres of CRP, but it also has to be connected to walk-in access. And the last couple of years, they've done thousands of acres uh, of new public access and, and, and new habitat, frankly, in their communities. Great story. Uh, it was first started in Aberdeen. It went to Mitchell. Uh, now it went out to Chamberlain. I think it's in a couple other communities out there as well. Uh, in Iowa, we started something uh, a little, little bit similar in, in Southwest Iowa. Uh, Southwest Iowa Communities for Farmers and Pheasants, I think is the name of that program. Um, so pretty, pretty unique angle for public access. Um, and then one that we just did recently as a conservation easement, um, Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever. And this was an obvious Quail Forever in Southern Illinois just came up with a uh, really big project. And we actually, it's probably one of the first ones in the nation because we couldn't find any other information about if it's ever been done before, but Quail Forever took over a 5,600 acre easement um, in Southern Illinois on former mining land. And you know, throughout, uh, throughout the history of Pheasants Forever and Quill Forever, especially as you go out uh, further east of the Mississippi uh, into mining territory and especially coal mines, you see a lot of reclaimed lands uh, that our chapters are working on, not only habitat, but also, also acquisition wise uh, to try and um, put themselves in the spotlight. Great stories uh, about community success, uh, bringing hunters in and creating public access. Um, so those are just a, 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 couple, a couple of the different highlights. Um, but local, 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 local. And Bob, Bob added this one at the bottom um, just to, uh, to emphasize the point uh, that, you know, these, these are local stories and local communities. And the more that we can um, Im impact your specific area where your Pheasants Forever, Quill Forever chapter may be, the more you can localize the story for people, uh, the more uh, folks are gonna take it to heart and they're gonna wanna be involved in the chapter and they're gonna wanna be involved in the banquet and do all the different things that the chapter's involved with. So that's, that's, an, that's a really important point in my mind is the local piece. Um, news media, news outlets, uh, now can they have to differentiate themselves using local angles. So if you think about the big nationals, the CNNs, the Fox News, the Wall Street Journal, and you see a story that has hooks to what we do, water quality hooks, pollinator hooks, public access hooks, think about that story, contact your local reporter and pitch them the local angle. When you can localize national trends, localize human connections, the local news is what sells newspapers in Knuckles County, Nebraska. The local news is what's going to get covered. So always be, and it's harder when you live in a big city, you know, Minneapolis Star Tribune or Chicago Sun Times, <clears throat> excuse me, but uh, our strength historically has always been in those rural communities and you, that's playing into that strength with some of your um, local angles, taking a national trend, localizing it and spinning it to a reporter um, should deliver you some news coverage and feel free if you need help um, coming up with a pitch or thinking about those, that's where you can utilize me and Jared too. Yep, certainly. Uh, so we're going to talk about some of the some of the different media angles uh, that chapters can can take part in. Um, pull up a few of these here. 
Uh, so print, print media is the first one we're going to focus on. Um, and it's, it's probably the one that's the most Im important or emphasized for pheasants forever and quail forever. Um, newspapers, although some of them have gone, gone digital um, and uh, you're reading a lot more news online, there's still a ton of local newspapers throughout the United States that are helping us to reach every nook and corner of the upland world. And like I just said, it's, it's often a rural community um, where people, people are reading the newspapers. Most of them are, most of them are bi-weekly uh, or twi uh, twice a week um, or four times, four times a month um, is what, they, what their usual rate is. But um, newspaper articles remain extremely important for that. Um, print stories are the match for television uh, and radio, and they come at a lot lower price as well. Um, so these are just a, these are just a couple um, examples of places. Chicago Sun-Times, I've become pretty good, pretty decent friends uh, with the outdoors reporter for the Chicago Sun-Times. Same for the Star Tribune, Dennis Anderson, who was one of the founders of Pheasants Forever, um, still, still works there, maybe retiring soon, but we're doing everything we can to pull every, every single ounce of story out of him as possible. Uh, the Wichita Eagle, um, got, a, got a hold of them and we just ran a, a pretty big article for the North American Grasslands Conservation Act. Uh, the out, outdoor news is of the world. There's Minnesota, uh, Wisconsin, uh, New York, Illinois. Um, they all have, um, they're all kind of based out of Minnesota. Rob Driesline, who's uh, one of the publishers for, for the publication. Lone Star, out, Lone Star Outdoor News is their own. Uh, but we work a lot in the outdoor news section. Uh, I send them all the press releases that come from Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever, and they run a lot of them for us. And they come to us a lot for, uh, you know, roadside reports, big things that are happening with the Farm Bill, because we're one of the most influential voices of the Farm Bill. Um, so print media remains a, a, a really important avenue uh, for getting, getting press coverage, especially at the local level. And all the, all the different angles that we just talked about are fair game uh, for getting into some of these. Um, at the bottom of the screen there on the right, you can see one that I, I just pulled up where, uh, this was not that long ago, um, but Texas Parks and Wildlife Department Quill forever looked for public hunting lands. Um, we actually hired the, the author of that article. Uh, we hired his son with, unknowingly hired his son um, and uh, he just, he goes, he goes around with the checkbook and is trying to sign up landowners uh, for an awesome uh, public access program uh, in the state of Texas. So um, those are the types of things that chapters can key in on too. If you've got a land acquisition, you've got a learn to hunt event, you've got an awesome banquet coming up. Maybe you have a veteran, maybe you have a veterans event. We've got a lot of those throughout the United States. We're paying, paying homage to our veterans, uh, bringing them out for a hunt. Um, and uh, those are just feel, feel good stories that we can get a lot of, uh, a lot of credit from. So I'm just going to highlight one thing. The last bullet, it probably reads a little awkward. Print stories are the match for television and radio. And what that means is think of it as the match that lights the fire. And Because I'm sure most people are saying, well, newspapers are dead, dude. What, what are you guys talking about newspapers for? Every single morning radio show, every single television news team when they get to the Wednesday morning desk, to, what are we going to talk about today? They decide what they're going to talk about based upon the newspaper, online or print, that morning. So it's the match that lights the fire. Yeah, they may not sell as many subscriptions as they used to, but they are still the number one influencer. <laughs> influencer. They put the emphasis in the right syllable. Um, number number one influencer for news coverage. So do not ignore um, print media, particularly in local communities. Go ahead, Jared. Um, broadcast media is the, the next avenue we're gonna talk about. Um, so that's, that's video and audio content. So radio and television comprise the bulk uh, of broadcast media. There's also avenues where we can take telephone and, and cell phones. Uh, that members have submitted, like when they when they purchase a membership, if they include those as just another medium for you know sending out text messages and doing those types of things. <laughs> Excuse me, we do have the capability to do those. Um, 
but they can also be very expensive based on the market, but can hit a huge crowd in a short amount of time. Um, so the biggest bang for the buck, radio commercials or public service announcements. We do have those available for chapters. I'm going to try to play one here. I hope, I hope everybody can hear it. Um, it's just a, it's a small example. It's one we've had for a while. Uh, we can, we can make custom um, public service announcements for folks to use on the radio. And a lot of times, uh, depending on what, what you come up with and, and working, working um, with the executive of, of that particular radio show, you can, you can run ads for, for pretty cheap online. It's just another way, um, you know, instead of just mouth to mouth, uh, you, can, you can put it on the radio and, and get heard over a wider region. Um, local outdoor radio shows, uh, you know, Bob just talked about, uh, you know, people op open up the newspaper to kind of see what's going on in the community and what they can highlight. They are always seeking guests on local radio shows. Um, I do a lot of them uh, in Minnesota, Iowa, uh, kind of throughout the nation. Um, for writers that I've, I've come to know over the years. It's a great way uh, to advertise uh, yourself, uh, your chapter, and what you're doing for the community. Um, and then the last one would be, in, you know, inviting a reporter to a banquet, a learn to hunt event, a land acquisition dedication, uh, or a habitat project. Don't be afraid to reach out to local media, um, especially if it's radio or television, and say, hey, we're, we're doing a land acquisition dedication today. Uh, would you guys like to come out and learn about it? Uh, we're, you know, we just bought 200 acres. It's being added on to this complex of public lands. It's going to help bring more people into our community to spend money at gas stations and and um, hotels and restaurants. Um, it's a it's a pretty easy angle for them to pick up. So uh, don't don't be afraid uh, about making the ask. Um, and you know, on the left hand side. Uh, on the bottom there, you can see during during Pheasant Fest, we had a nice uh, we had a nice video story uh, that was done uh, by Kelo Land News. Um, and on the top, uh, the Aberdeen Pheasant Hunt uh, is based around the Aberdeen Pheasant Coalition, which I talked about earlier, where the chapter is matching money uh, from local restaurants and hotels that are benefiting from hunters, and they're sinking that right back into public access and habitat in their local communities. It's a pretty compelling story. Uh, for a Pheasants Forever or Quail Forever chapter, depending on where you live in the nation. So real quick, I'm going to try to play this PSA. Uh, Bob and Will, you can let me know if you hear it. And uh, this is just what, one of the mediums we can use and, and to help chapters out. You're, you're going to have to share your sound as well uh, in the uh -oh. share the screen function. So if you can find it, go ahead. I uh, we were able to do it last last chapter happy hour, so it's not coming through. Including shotguns, rifles, dog gear. Do you want more pheasants? Then we need more habitat. Pheasants Forever wants to treat you to a night of fun filled with raffles, games, auctions, and lots of exciting prizes, including shotguns, rifles, dog gear, hunting clothing, and wildlife art. And all this fun translates into better habitat for the birds. Simply buy a ticket to the Pheasants Forever Chapter Banquet and join us for the fun. Here's how. At the end of that, that's where you put your own information um, about the banquet, the cost, where it's at, and who to contact. Uh, it's a pretty easy way. And for, you know, chapters that are looking to spend money um, on advertising their bank, whether you're sending out a mailer or, or postcard or what it might be, this is just another avenue for chapters to consider. That's a, a great way to reach a, a pretty large audience. Um, and on, on the broadcast uh, media, oh, I guess I'll save it for the next slide. I'll talk a little bit more about something that, that happened today uh, just from, from sharing things on social. So Bob, anything else to add there? You're good. All right. Uh, all right, here we go. Uh, the next one would be digital and social media. Um, and I'm going to emails, podcasts, blogs, websites, uh, everything that Pheasants Forever does online. Um, chapters are allowed to share, you know, through social media. Um, I'm going to talk about a little bit about social media and how it can, it can be really, you can be really proactive in it and it can help you build an audience in your local communities. It can also take you down a rabbit hole as well. We'll talk about all of those, but um, you know, 
Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever. Uh, we've got our Facebook, we've got Twitter, uh, and we've got our Instagram accounts. You can see all the numbers on there. Pretty impressive. Uh, you know, when we do action alerts, uh, when we're just uh, publishing podcasts, blogs, those types of things. Um, we get a lot of interaction with our members. Um, and we know a couple, couple different things for those that do have social media sites or maybe looking at starting some is that land acquisitions, dogs, pictures of pheasants, uh, and public access are what sell on social media for us from a, from a hunter's perspective. So uh, we'll talk a, a little bit more about that here in the next couple of slides. Um, so there's uh, five different things from social media that, that you can achieve by having a, an account. And I think Facebook is probably one of the best ways to go um, for Pheasants Forever and Quill Forever chapters that are willing to, to upkeep the content. You have to post at least once a day. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, chapter social media pages that have been out there for a long time that maybe get like three or four posts a year. And we've really been working with chapters to, to cut down on those and actually take those off because it, 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 it gives the impression that we're not as involved as we should be. So if you want to have a Facebook page, uh, I encourage you to do it. Just need to keep it up updated. Um, we're going to talk about some of these different things. So Social media mindset, impact, uh, difference makers for conservation. That's uh, you know a lot of the, the land acquisitions, um, a lot of the public access things we're doing, habitat projects, uh, food plot stuff, um, just mission impact uh, are those types of posts. Uh, appeal, making the ask to get involved. Um, you know you can do you can do sponsored posts uh, for chapters that uh, there are chapters out there that spend a little money on sponsored ads through Facebook, uh, making the ask to get involved to pick up committee members. Um, they will advertise uh, their meetings that they have, their monthly meetings to try to pick up more people. It can work uh, if you do it in the right way. So that's the appeal. Um, try to make things shareable. Uh, interact with members. If people are coming on there and making comments about an awesome habitat project. Um, going back on and, and, and making sure that you're interacting with them one-on-one. -on -one. Um, it's a great way to invite people uh, to meetings. It's a great way. We've picked up a lot of folks that way uh, through our national Facebook page uh, for people reach out, interact with them and say, hey, is there Pheasants Forever or Quill Forever by me? That's when I can look them up by zip code and send them in the way of our regional reps. Uh, member testimonials. Uh, I'll get into that in just a second. We've got a great one uh, that we did a couple years ago. It's basically proof statements that show Pheasants Forever and Quill Forever is an awesome Upland organization. Uh, and events and fundraising too. Um, so local function and fundraisers, uh, you can advertise those on Facebook big time. Um, here's some of the different things. You can get a like, you can dislike on Facebook. I deal with some of that. Um, sometimes there's comments on our page uh, where I think they need a little punch in the face. And then this is my favorite here, the, the WT Facebook. Um, I deal with a lot of different things on Facebook as kind of a social media manager, specifically our Facebook page. Uh, Bob does Twitter, some of our other staff, uh, we help out on the Instagram page as well. Um, but you can really, you can go down a rabbit hole pretty quick. Uh, but I'm going to talk about some of the, the impactful posts. Uh, so this is one we did. Uh, I think a lot of people in Pheasants Forever Quill Forever know. If you don't, that's fine. I'm going to tell you right now that uh, you know, pheasants, pheasants and quail are the motivation for us, but we go outside those birds to impact habitat at a higher level, working on a lot of different species in the upland world. Um, sage grouse is one of them. Sage grouse are in trouble right now. Um, we're, we've done uh, through the sage grouse initiative and, and pheasants forever has a lot of biologists and habitat specialists on the landscape um, doing uh, hundreds of thousands of acres uh, of uh, juniper, juniper removal. Um, and other, um, other types of trees that are considered invasive. So uh, this, is a, this is a post that we did. You can see it got a ton of interaction from folks uh, showing people how we're making a difference on the landscape. Uh, it's a feel good post too. Um, you're taking an invasive, invasive tree, taking it off there. And we did some follow up with this as well, showing folks how we restored sagebrush um, to, its, to, its form, to its former landscape. So. Um, a pretty cool post. And um, as it goes with Facebook or any social media, try to stick to the 70, 20, 10 rule. So uh, stick, stick, to, stick to your brand, stick to Pheasants Forever and Quill Forever and the things that you're doing on the local level. You can certainly share a lot of the things that we do uh, on the national side as well. 
Um, but uh, stick stick to your brand, stick to things local. 20% uh, of that is shared. Um, if you've got partners, uh, we do share plenty of plenty of partner posts, but we try to stick to the 70, 20, 10. Uh, and 10% of that is uh, promotional items. So we do we do push um, you know memberships on both Pheasants Forever and Quill Forever with some of the premiums that we have. Uh, to try to get more members to sign up. And nowhere is that more important than right now, uh, or no time is that more important than right now, especially uh, with COVID and all the banquets we had canceled. Um, we've, we lost a, a fair amount of members and we're working through that right now to, to, to gain those members back. And anything that you're doing online, uploading photos directly and including a link gets 20 times more engagement uh, than the small little thumbnails of a person you can't really see on a Facebook uh, post. So uh, make sure you're using quality photos, quality video, um, and you'll get a lot of engagement uh, on the Facebook side. How am I doing, Bob? Anything there? Good. I would just say if you're going to take photos, I'm sorry, video, make sure you're taking them horizontal. Um, so landscape uh, for Facebook. Or Otherwise, it's going to look real wonky if you're taking them vertical. Yep, high res video. Hold the camera, hold the camera sideways, horizontal, um, and it creates a, a high res video for you. If, if you do it vertical, it compresses it. So just keep that. If you're doing anything, uh, you know, at a at a banquet or a local event, an acquisition, whatever it might be, habitat project, make sure you're you're holding the camera sideways. Uh, member testimonials. Um, this is a big one too. We, we, we love doing these. Uh, we do them quite often for Pheasants Forever and Quill Forever, but this was actually a story that uh, Outdoor Life reached out to and they wonder if we had anybody in the quail range that was kind of an influential voice for the bird and for our organization. Um, and uh, I don't know if he's watching tonight, but Bo Henry uh, down in uh, Southwest Georgia uh, is just a, a, a great conservationist and somebody that's been very involved uh, with Quail Forever and has, has taken his chapter by leaps and bounds down there. Um, but uh, this is basically presenting social proof to Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever audiences that we are who we say, say we are um, and we're doing great things on the landscape uh, for, for quail, pheasants, and other wildlife. So it's sort of a psychological principle, monkey see, monkey do. Just like with my kids, when you put this type of information out there uh, on social media, people see that and are like, man, I, I want to be, I want to be just like that guy. Uh, I want to get involved in quail forever and do some of the cool things that they're doing, not only for public access, but working with uh, local farmers and ranchers in their communities uh, to, to, to impact habitat in a major way. So um, member testimonials are great. Uh, and this was a, a wonderful one that we did in, in uh, Georgia on behalf of, of quail forever. Um, appeals. Um, obviously we talked about this a little bit. Um, Listen, folks, we're we're all on the same team. We're we're moving forward, and we use premiums as a way to try to pick up pick up new members, especially on social media. So, don't be afraid to share some of the the, the awesome things that we have. Um, you know, it it doesn't impact people coming to a banquet. People are still going to come to a banquet. Um, you know, they aren't coming just to get their mom membership. They're they're coming to banquets uh, for the camaraderie. They're coming to banquets to to win firearms. Uh, to share habitat success stories, to share hunting stories with their buddies, and maybe have a cocktail once in a while. Um, so uh, the appeal is important. Um, we ask supporters to donate or get involved all the time, um, and chapters can do that on Facebook as well or social media. I just had a chapter from Wisconsin the other day that published a video about an awesome land acquisition they're doing, um, and they asked for uh, support through donations. Um, same, same concept here. Uh, so we basically post on a month monthly basis uh, to give people a reminder that that we're here and um, it's just a sort of a carrot to get people to sign up. Um, you can see this is this is one of them that we did uh, about a year and a half ago. Acres and access. Uh, clickbait would be another one for social media. Uh, Facebook remains an interactive experience for users, uh, and nowhere is is that more apparent than when when we post uh, specific things throughout the year. And and one of them is a stocking post. We know it doesn't work. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of people think it does. Um, there's back and forth on each side, but we we do about one stocking uh, post per year that gets probably some of the most engagement uh, throughout throughout an entire 365 days of social media. 
uh, at Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever. But it's basically, it's, it's clickbait, you know. It represents uh, posing a question, offering up a controversial topic, or maybe creating a poll uh, amongst Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever supporters uh, that gets people interacting. Um, the more interacting you can get for algorithms for uh, social media, um, the more that your Facebook pages and uh, Instagram and Twitter are going to show up at the top of the feed when people when people open up their social media accounts to look at after work or whenever the time might be. Um, so we do we do plenty of those throughout the year as well. Contests, um, uh, you know, a couple controversial posts here and there, depending how you look at it. And it really does bring in a, a, a lot of people and it, it raises the bar for our social media efforts. Uh, events and fundraising is another one. Um, we did a, a birds and brews deal a few years ago at Live Bridge Brewing here uh, in the Twin Cities. And uh, especially Facebook can be a wonderful tool for organizing and promoting events. Um, you can track all the RSVPs that you do through Facebook. Uh, they have an event page that can be linked to external websites. Um, we don't use Eventbrite anymore, but that's just an example. Um, each event remains customizable. Uh, you can add images, videos, you can share event activities. Um, this is just an overview of the insights of that one and how many tickets we sold just on, just on Facebook event and the number of people we, we reached. We reached 32,000 people uh, over a two week period and we had 448 responses uh, to whether they were gonna uh, attend or not. You can see some of the audience there. But this is very similar to what we're currently doing on our own event website. Um, and I know that our regional reps are, are cracking down on this a little bit as well. Any event that you have, I don't care if it's a banquet, a learn to hunt event. Um, we just had a, a women on the wing event. It was a pool party the other day, whatever it might be. Um, making sure that you upload these on our event website so people can find them. Um, we're we're making some pretty big improvements to our, our chapter, uh, a ch uh, find a chapter website page uh, that pulls banquet information in uh, for specific chapters. So if your banquet information or whatever type of event you have on here uh, is loaded, it'll automatically be pulled in to our uh, find a chapter website um, or map and uh, people, people be able to find your events a lot easier. So make sure, make sure you're using that function. The single biggest term searched on our website is chapter banquet. People are coming, 6 million visitors a year come into the Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever websites. And the number one thing typed into search is chapter banquet. They're trying to find our banquets. Help us by getting your events on our calendar. We, we have an audience that we're trying to funnel into you, but if we don't have those calendar of events if we don't have your events on our calendar, it's it's a swing and a miss. So help us uh, help us put it on the tee for you. If you have questions about any of that, um, your regional representative would be would love to help you, right, Will? We're here to serve. You bet. <laughs> Reach out to us, and we'll make sure to get it on the website. Um, so a word word of caution on social media. Uh, political campaign activities pose pretty big risk to the tax exempt status of Pheasants Forever and Quill Forever. Can't support candidates. Um, I've dealt with, dealt with plenty of that in the last uh, year and a half. Um, it's, uh, you know, we just have a quick conversation and, and, and take posts down if, if that's what happens. But um, for chapter pages, if you have one, if you're questioning statistics or the validity of a post, you can contact the PR department, myself first, Bob second. Um, and the other one would be not, do not engage in anti-hunting or, or second amendment conversations. We're a, we're a wildlife habitat conservation group first and foremost. Uh, but this is, this is just an example. Uh, this is just an example from one of the groups that I'm in um, where people pose, pose, pose a question and how fast it can go down a rabbit hole. I'll let everybody re read the comments on the lower left. Um, you know, everything, everything from, uh, uh, supposed mean seeds uh, to habitat stamps uh, to bringing interesting people into your banquets here on the bottom. Um, there's a lot of different ways things can go on social media. So, so keep it, keeping it clean and keeping it updated 
um, is the is the best way to go. Uh, if you have questions about anything that you're posting, it, it probably shouldn't it probably shouldn't be posted. So if you have questions on any of that, um, I deal with it on a on a daily basis. So uh, feel free to feel free to reach out. There it is. Avoid the dreaded social media rabbit hole. That's a great example on the left. Um, so with that, you know, let's let's crow about our successes. High res pictures, videos, landscape stills of chapter projects are all fair game um, and awesome ways that you can you can send to a reporter, uh, a radio station, a television station uh, to try to get coverage for projects. And our staff is here to help you with that. I'm proud to say that we are hiring a second public relations specialist, or he's, we hired him. He starts on Monday, um, and we're going to have more um, we're going to have more bodies in chairs to to be able to help chapters do those wonderful things for their banquets. Um, innovative events, pipe nights, specific fundraisers, uh, roadside counts, growing surveys, stocking predator research. It's all awesome stuff that gets a lot of engagement on social media. Um, MOUs and partnership agreements are great, but the results of those, the on the ground, tangible habitat results are key. We've got chapters throughout the country that are working on build a, build a wildlife area, uh, walk in access programs. Um, there's more success stories out there than what come across our desk. So I guess the, the, point, uh, the point of this uh, evening is to have everybody thinking at a higher level and say, man, this seems, like a, this seems like a great angle for a story. Maybe yeah, I should send it to the regional rep. Uh, carbon copy Jared, Jared and Bob on it. You, can, um, you know, those are, those are wonderful ways uh, that gets the conversation starting. And if it's, maybe it's, maybe it's more of a story or a blog for us, uh, you know, than it is a, a potential uh, story for a reporter. That's fine. Uh, we have great, great sections in the magazine where we can use that type of information. Um, but I just want everybody to know that our, our staff and particularly uh, the PR communications marketing department is here to help chapters in any way we, that we can. Um, so feel free to feel free to reach out if you ever have any questions. And uh, television shows, the flush is always looking for story ideas, podcasts. Yep. Um, you got an idea, fire it our way. We, we love hearing from you. Uh, with that, my information's on the page. Um, I talk to a lot of chapter folks uh, in a given week, so don't don't be shy about uh, giving me a call or shooting me an email. Um, but uh, I think I'll turn it back over to Will here because we're at uh, 47 minute mark and see if there's any any questions that we can answer for the for the group. I appreciate it, guys. Uh, great information as always. It's so good to hear from the both of you. Um, Bob did a really good job of answering some Q and A's as they came in. Um, so feel free to dive in there. If you uh, haven't seen those yet, if you have any more, we've got a few minutes left, uh, throw a couple questions in there. We can answer them live. I wanted to touch on just a couple of things that I wrote down, um, just to reiterate you know, some of the main points or some of the things I picked up on as you guys went through this. And the first thing. Bob, is something you said, it really wasn't a part of the presentation, but it's something that I, I, I kind of live my life by as well, as fun is good. Um, and we've got a lot of really dedicated and phenomenal chapter leaders with us today. Um, and they're, they're all across the country. And to remember that, you know, this is, this is a fun organization to be a part of. Um, and fun is the core of what we do, right? It's fun to be a part of a chapter. It's fun to volunteer for something so meaningful in this mission that we deliver. So uh, I always love to bring it back to that. Uh, second is, and this is coming from the regional rep in me, send us your stories. That was touched on in the beginning. All the regional reps, all 25 of us across the country, we love to brag about chapters and we love to brag about you guys individually. Uh, we want to help you write those stories. We want to help you get connected with Bob and Jared to put things together. But uh, you guys have to let us know what's going on out there. We're not uh, always in tune with it. So I appreciate that. And uh, results driven stories. Yeah, that was right at the end there, Jared. I, I really appreciate that. But um, that's what I love to read, right? What have you done? What are we doing? And I know that if I'm attracted to an organization, if I want to jump into a chapter, come check out an event, 
I want to know what they're about and what they've done, what they've accomplished. So uh, again, we will do all we can to help produce those stories. Uh, help you deliver those stories and, and again bob and jared I, I just can't thank you enough for joining us um i didn't the see last, any more questions come in so the last thing i'll throw out is you know um every couple of years we do a, a redex survey of of our members to see um you know what they what they like what they dislike uh about our 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 magazine uh, our journals the way of communication things that we do online and one of the big things that came from that is they want to they want to hear more local chapter stories. Um, they they're they're begging for it, and that's one of the reasons why we switched to more of a regional news focus in the back of the journals now. So um, I would implore everybody if you're on this call tonight, you're on here for a reason to to learn more about advertising. It's not just for your banquets; it's for your habitat projects as well. There are more habitat projects going on in the landscape than than we could poss possibly capture. Um, but we want to hear, we want to hear about all of them. Um, and you know, some, some are, uh, some are at a larger level than others, uh, depending on chapters that might be, uh, using some sort of grant, um, some sort of larger partnership and that's totally fine, but there's some very, very meaningful projects going on at the local level that that story needs to be told. And that's where myself and Bob and Casey Sill, uh, our new, public relations specialist that's starting on Monday can come in and, and really do a bang up job of, of helping chapters advertise those types of things. And whether you go, whether you go through your regional rep or come straight to us, uh, it, it, it doesn't matter as long as that story is getting told um, and uh, the, the cream rises to the top. And we'll, we'll, we'll help you guys uh, advertise those successes uh, in the journal with reporters, with media, uh, and on, on social. So we're here to help. And uh, I appreciate everybody coming on for, uh, for tonight's chapter. Happy hour. Thanks, Jared. Well, that's it. That's all I've got. Uh, I'm going to let these two guys go again. Thanks for joining me. Uh, I'll be back October 18th, 7 p.m. We're going to talk with Matt O'Connor of Habitat Forever, which will be a lively conversation about prescribed fire and uh, everything chapters need to know. So we'll see you in October. Good luck hunting, everybody. Take care. Thanks, guys. Thank you.